Well, today's motor day. We got most of the cockpit stuff like put in there and like uh, we got like the steering box all like put together and um, bolted down. We still have to drill the seat um, and then we're gonna do the dash, but the dash is a lot easier if the motor's in, so then you can uh, line up your fuel lines and stuff. So let's put the motor in. So like I said, we got the steering box all down, but these there's two fuel lines, um, one right here, then one down by the fuel pump that have to go through the dashboard. And like I said before, it's just a lot easier when the motor's in place and it's all like there. And then we could just like drill our holes and make it 10 times easier. And then with the seat, we gotta get certain mounts because my seat actually needs to be raised up a little bit. So we're kind of waiting on that to drill. Um, but yeah. Brand new, beautiful butler belt. My brand new butler belt. I've, I had Tanner's uh, hand me down from what the, fir the first seat you actually had. Um, I, ha I ran that the first year of spring cars and then a little bit of last year. Um, but it was, it was time for me to get a new one. Um, so yeah. It's coming down or you want to go forward? I'll go back a little bit if you can. But it's not all the way in. Or just hold it. There we go. So, oh. on my side needs to go down a little bit more. This is great camera is quality. Dead. You gotta push. So we got it, Carly. You gotta push on his side. Hang on, I gotta push this. I gotta push this forward. Okay, ready? Oh, there you go. Is it in? Ah. Tanner should do. I think your side's like lined up, son. What well, hole do you want it? Mid middle. Middle. Centric down. Center up, up if you can. If you go down, it should. There you go. Did it go in? Yeah, it went in. There it goes. You can use the gun on that if you want. I give you permission. Carly knows I rip. I rip on people around here if they use the impact when we're not supposed to. But the, the eccentric, the eccentric is allowed. And just like that, we are on the GoPro. So first things first is I'm gonna lay out a rag so I can put all the injectors on the rag. Um, so when I take them out, then they're not just sitting on the counter getting even more dirty. But I got all the tools right here. Uh, it's just a 7 16ths and a 5 8 socket. And now we gotta get to it. A really good tip is for your 7 16 um, wrench, make sure it has that like, uh, see how it has like that point at the top? That makes it super duper easy to just kind of Crack all these loose. And if you don't have small hands, then this job is very, very difficult. The 360 motor, it, like the space between these right here, is a lot um, wider than our limited motor used to be. And so it was very tricky, especially with the ones back here. Super duper hard to get to. So now all the lines are off the injectors. So now we're gonna pull the injectors out with our 5 8 wrench. And just like that, all four of these are ready to come out. Now that all four injectors are out, we are gonna come and put them on our rag right here before we go and put them in the tank to get clean, just so then they don't get dirty or even more dirty than what they probably are. So now we gotta take these four out. All right, same thing with these four injectors. We're gonna come over here, put them right here on the bench. And there's no important way on which order you gotta take these out. I always start with the front ones just because I find those ones way easier to get out than the back ones. Um, but like I said, no important way to get them out or whatever, you just make sure you have the right tools for it. And then they should just come right out after you kind of loosen them a little bit. So next, we gotta clean them. So let's go get the tank ready for those to get clean. So right here's our cleaning tank. Alrighty, so I just plugged it in and turned it on. Next, we have to add hot water. So we're gonna let this water warm up. And you only have to do about a little bit, like three quarters of a cup maybe. There's a line actually on here that says minimum, maximum. And we just kind of fill it up right above the minimum line. All right, now that's hot. Might need a little bit more. Oh shoot. Yeah, it's gonna need a little bit more. I would say about two cups actually, not three quarters. It just kind of depends on your 
like your machine that you're using. Let's do it a little bit more. So I did about two cups. All right, now that it's just above the little minimum line, and then we're just gonna put the lid on. We're gonna hit TC and give it about 10 minutes. Once the water is all warmed up or hot, then we're gonna put this um, ultrasonic like cleansing powder in it to clean the injectors. All right, so time to sprinkle this stuff in. I believe this is hot enough. And it's just a light little sprinkle. And now, put our injectors in. And you wanna put them in every other way. Just like that. And... All right, you guys, while the ultrasonic cleaner is cleaning the injectors, we do about three, three of those um, like sessions just to make sure they're all cleaned out. I think I'm only gonna do two on this one just because I believe we actually did clean them before we put the motor away, but there was only like two of them that were still kind of dirty. So I think I'm only gonna do two sessions on that. But while we wait on that, um, we actually don't have hoses for the radiator. We have to get them made. So let's put the gears in my rear end since there's no gears in it. And there should be no gear oil as well. So I don't need a pan or anything. Yeah, just like a 916 on our little gun here. And we should be good. Well, looks like there's a little bit of gear oil left, so. I guess there was some gear oil left in there, so we're just gonna grab a pan just for it to drip. Put the pan under there. Big one always goes on top. And I'm sure Tanner's told you, and numbers out. So big one on top, numbers out all the time. And this goes. All right, and this is done. So we're gonna hit set. We're gonna take it back to 480, hit on, let it do another cycle. And this should be the last cycle that we're gonna do. Let's see. So down there, there's like a little shaft and the gear oil has to be or above it, it has to cover it. That's how you know you're basically full. And a fun fact about uh, gear oil, some people don't reuse it and others do. We personally reuse like the good part of it. Um, we like drain it. Um, and if it looks like on the cleaner side, then we'll reuse it. Um, but if not, then we obviously just toss it. So the injectors are done. So I'm gonna go get them out of the ultrasonic tank. Uh, you gotta get some blue towels. I just set them right on top of the lid. So all we gotta do is just kind of spray them out and then you hold them actually up to the light like that. And you can like, if you see, you can, if you can see straight through them, then they're clean. And if there's like some particles in there, then that's obviously just like dirt or, um, it really could be anything, but it means that they're not clean. Both ways. But right around this like black O-ring right here, spray a little WD-40. And then also up here where the um, lines go. This is just so, you know, keep everything up. All right, so now that these are all cleaned and my dad looked at them and he said that they looked good. Those are all tight, but they're on. And uh, guys, personally, I always have someone double check um, any of my work, especially on the motor side of life. So my dad's gonna go over um, the injectors and the lines. like that they're back in place where they were way before um, now that that's done this video is gonna come to an end but I want to catch you guys up on an update so we're gonna switch back over to the vlog camera for this one so let's do it and so now I want to update you guys on how my latest doctor's appointment went for my back um, just to kind of start off I was going into the appointment very nervous because I knew we were going to be talking about the subject of me getting back in the car, uh, me racing again, 
and me just kind of living my life having fun. So the first thing we kind of talked about was just how my back went. We went over my CT scan and my x-rays. They both looked um, phenomenal. They were good. It showed great signs of me healing, but it also showed that I haven't like, like there's no more healing to be healed for the most part. So like she hasn't seen any new changes, I guess is the right word. Um, so there's been no new changes since the past, you know, six months, three months, or what I think it was three months. And so, um, which is good. That means that, that means that my back's for the most part healed. Like I said, we looked at my x-ray and my CT scan. The x-rays to me, they look the same as when, um, I kind of first went into the hospital, but like a little bit, like slightly better. So I was kind of confused. I was like, why did the x-rays look the same as you know, my previous x-rays three months ago, but I guess with your back, when it breaks like um, how I did the compression fracture and stuff, that actually doesn't heal back to like the square is kind of like the fixture it's supposed to look like. It, it won't look, it won't like grow back to like that. It'll never grow back to like that. And that leads me, us to our next conversation about how we can strengthen my back to get my bones um, not so weak and just kind of strengthen them a little bit so then I can, you know, go live my life and get back in a race car and go have fun. That being said, that I can't, the only thing I can do for my back to stay as strong as it is right now is to keep my body as healthy as I can and just kind of exercise um, with walking or running or jogging or whatever. Like, I can't go and lift weights for my back to get better. I can't go to the gym and do certain machines to get my back stronger. I just kinda gotta live with what I got and know that my T3, my T4 will be weak um, the rest of my life. And so after that conversation, that led into getting back behind the wheel. And I know where my doctor's coming from when she says that she cannot physically clear me to go race or um, to go do any physical activity that can get myself hurt more. Uh, most doctors would not clear you if you're a football player and you get really hurt out on the field your um, Doctor's not gonna clear you and say all right You can go and play football again And you're not gonna get hurt and you're gonna be fine and your bones are fine and whatever the doctors just can't do that all they can say is that um, they wish the best for you and that um, Just maybe find a solution for maybe extra padding in your seat or um, extra pads for when you're out on the football field or whatever, whatever it may be. They, they, they can help you out by finding an extra solution for your back, your leg, your arm, whatever. And they just, they say, go live your life. But I'm not gonna sit here and say that you're technically cleared. So that being said, not the news we were really wanting to hear, but I also, I totally understand where my doctor's coming from. And uh, like I said, if any other doctor told me, I understand where they're coming from as well. Um, the doctors just can't really clear you for extreme physical activities um, after a serious injury. So after all that, being nervous going into the appointment, hearing what I heard, and then coming out of it, I wasn't too happy at like, right at the beginning, but then I kind of just thought to myself like, the doctor just wants me to live my life. I want to live my life. I don't want to be, you know, stuck at home all the time or stuck in the grandstands just watching races. I want to race. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. And obviously guys, I know the risk I'm taking. I know um, what I have to do. And there's certain precautions that I have to take but I have the best safety gear that I can get. We're gonna put extra padding in my seat. Um, we're just, we're gonna do whatever we can to make me feel as comfortable as I can in this race car right here. I'm gonna keep myself as safe as I can in racing, whether that be, you know, driving or what. It's not gonna change my driving style at all. We're still gonna race hard. We're gonna be aggressive on the wheel. Um, we're gonna win. So that's my goal for 2023, is just to win some races, um, whether that be local shows or shows, you know, wherever, if we're traveling or whatnot, just so that I can win a few races to kind of get that back under my belt. And I should have my schedule be coming out in the next week or so. I still gotta go over it a little bit with Tanner. 
um, because I don't want to conflict with his schedule at all. So that'll be coming out to you guys soon, so stay tuned for that. And thank you all so much for the support. Uh, I just can't thank you enough. See you guys on the next one. Peace.